and welcome to Sustainably Geeky, Episode 6, where we'll be talking about how to be more environmentally conscious for the holidays. Um, we have the regular crew here today, Stefan, Jen, and Chris, and we are also joined by a guest. Uh, Rebecca's joining us. Rebecca, do you mind just giving us a couple sentences about yourself? Sure. My name is Rebecca. I'm from New York, and I recently moved to Texas, and I am a tree hugger. I love the environment, and that's why I'm here today. Awesome. So Rebecca has been uh, a regular member of the Suntex Planeteers group that I started last year. Her and her husband have been coming to almost every event, and um, we've all bonded over our love for the environment and camping and outdoors. So um, um, I have on today to share a little bit of her experience as we talk about um, ways to go green for the holidays. Um, so with that, um, who wants to go first? Who has a really good idea for ways that we can minimize our impact during this busy time of year? Well, I have a few, if you guys don't mind me starting. Oh, <laughs> sure. All right. This is Jennifer <laughs> Raleigh. And uh, really just kind of wanted to start off the call with the mindset that through the holidays, um, just try to think about ways you can buy things that are either recyclable, reusable, or compostable. So when you're out shopping and buying, um, just do your best to keep that in mind so that you're not going to have something that you have to throw away. And also that thus is more. The more you put out and the more you decorate, the more time you're going to have to spend putting all of that back up again. <laughs> so just, um, you know, if there's stuff that you don't absolutely have to have, you can give it away to Goodwill. Um, and then that way you're not, you know, spending time decorating a whole bunch when you just have to take it all down at the end of the season. Um, yeah, I think we all get really caught up just buying all the cheap, quick decorations. And then we're like at the end of the season, either trashing them or they break or we, you know, like you said, spend hours and hours. So um, I've been guilty of that myself. It's been a hard lesson to learn. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I've been buying a lot of stuff from Goodwill and secondhand stores. So don't think that you have to buy new. There's a lot of stuff that can be reused and people don't want anymore. So just think about, you know, maybe not buying something that's brand new at Target or Walmart or wherever you go. Um, there's plenty of really good stuff out there on secondhand. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, speaking of secondhand, I think that something that is really great to give for the holidays is something that is handmade and heartfelt. So you can create something that you actually see. Maybe you're inspired by something at Goodwill. Just because it's at Goodwill doesn't mean that it can't be a fantastic gift for someone else. As long as you personalize it, customize it, you can turn a shirt into something really unique and really cool. I know I have a sewing machine, so I'm always making things for people and trying to lessen my carbon footprint in that way. So, yeah, I love that. And you're upcycling something else into something thoughtful. Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be every gift. Even if you did something small that you made and then gave something small that was new, still you're lessening your carbon footprint regardless. So net positive, I think. Right. Yeah. Um, I have one that relates to decorating and upcycling. Um, a friend of mine actually just posted on Facebook he went to, I don't know if it was HEB or, or somewhere, Lowe's, um, and got some scraps from the, you know, the department that has the trees, and he made a wreath out of them. And um, that's a really cool way to give that, you know, a little extra life. And uh, Steph and I know Amanda's done that. She will get, like, pieces of old trees and, and kind of make garland. So that's a great way to use something rather than buying a cheap plastic one or, you know, going and actually buying that. You can just usually get it free if you just ask them for their scraps that they would be throwing away anyways. Yeah, yeah I was absolutely. Gonna, I was going to touch on that <laughs> a little bit. Like you could do fun <laughs> projects with your kids, um, like making wreaths with pine cones or pine needles or whatever kind of natural products or leaves that you have in the yard. Goals in Texas. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but all those things can last a long time, and um, and then they're also compostable when you're done using them too. And they smell good. That's for sure. No, it's it it it's true. You know, and like uh, it's those little things. Um, 
just kind of around the house. I mean, my wife Amanda is amazing at just making a house really feel like a home and decorating all the seasons and stuff. But um, yeah, these little touches, like you said, just little a little sprig of you know evergreen some some place or a little touch of like berry or holly or whatever. It's yeah, it makes a big difference. Absolutely. Um, Chris, did you have anything to add before we? Sure. Um, so for me, I am a bit of a Scrooge. I'm <laughs> not a huge fan of the holidays. Uh, <laughs> so for people like me who don't, I don't like decorating for the seasons. I just mostly out of laziness. Um, so all we do is the tree and whatever thing the kids bring home from school, we'll put up on the fridge or wherever it needs to be hung. But that's about it. So my big thing is, don't if you don't want to decorate for the holidays, don't feel like you have to. If you're just one of those people who just just getting through the holidays is all you can do, then that's fine. Right. All you can do is put up the tree. Just put up the tree. Don't feel like you have to as uh, some weird social obligation to decorate for this holiday. If you want to, that's awesome. My mom loves doing it. Ray's mom loves doing it. There's lots <laughs> of people who it, they get a lot of joy out of it. For me, it stresses me out. It doesn't make the holiday any better for me. So I just put up the tree for the kids and that's kind of it. Yeah, absolutely. Do what you, everyone celebrates differently. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's so true. Like I was, I've often thought about how people in, like just around the world um, who celebrate Christmas, how they celebrate it because this whole thing about, I mean, so much of what we think of as Christmas in the United States and like in kind of the dominant white culture is really coming from like Victorian era England, <laughs> you know, and it's just from a very specific time and place, but yet we've kind of adopted it wholesale and feel like we have to just yeah. buy into the whole thing. But yeah, there's, there's a, as many ways of celebrating Christmas as there are people, really. Mm -hmm. Or at least there should be. Well, I like now. to decorate. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I like to decorate, but not. I don't like to go crazy with it. Um, so I did buy some solar-powered twinkle lights for the outside of the house. Um, so you don't have to worry about like having extension cords. You can pretty much just put it wherever as long as a little solar powered stake that goes in the ground can get access to sunlight every day. And it just turns on when the sun goes down and it's pretty easy breezy, but yeah. So I'm trying to be like friendly about it to the environment and not use actual electric grid. But yeah, I do get kind of into the season and like to put a little bit out, but not, not a lot. <laughs> so, but, um, there's also led lights. So those use a lot less electricity and they also last a lot longer. Um, and I think that again, just less is more, you just have to put out one or two strands. You don't have to, you know, decorate your whole entire house or yard with 50 lights. <laughs> um, yeah. And then your energy bill will be a lot less. So you'll, you'll be happy about that. Yeah. And on, on that note regarding energy, the energy bill and lights, I mean, this is maybe a minor thing, but, um, one thing we do before we go to bed is we turn off the Christmas lights that are on the tree because we're in bed and we can't see them and <laughs> nobody cares if they're on or off. So just saves a little bit on your bill. Electric bill. Absolutely. Speaking of decorating and such, um, so my tree is pretty much the most that I do at home and I go all out. It's decked with with ornaments, but um, I have been seeing a lot online about uh, places where they actually rent or sell trees in a pot, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And then you can either bring them back and year after year, they give you the same tree. They just plant it and then repot it for you the next year. Um, or you can plant it in your own yard, which I think is a really cool, uh, sustainable way to celebrate you're not using plastic you're also not killing a tree every year and sending it you know to the landfill or hopefully recycling it if you're you know in a place that offers that so they don't have that here unfortunately um the christmas tree farm 
business isn't very lucrative in Texas, but <laughs> they do sell trees though that have the roots with them. So if I had a house this year, that's what I was going to do. I was going to get a tree yeah. that I could put in my yard and then bring back just myself. And it was a baby tree, so it wouldn't be too Aww. intensive until it was significantly later. But I don't mind having a baby tree. It would be so nice to have like that smell and it be a real tree. Um, but that's a good option if you do have a house, even having a little one that grows as your family, you know, has memories with it, it could be a solid idea. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if my trees have been secondhand and they, they are, I don't have to deal with hauling them and putting them up and getting a new one every year. But um, yeah, I was going to ask about that actually on the topic of Christmas trees. Like, does it do any of you guys know? Because I don't. Like the whole um, the Christmas tree industry. I mean, is it sustainable as as far as that goes, or is it? No. On the whole, I mean, <laughs> it's anything no. really. I mean, I know there are like big farms that you know, for every tree they cut down, they plant and plant another tree. So I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. That works, but from what I've heard, the pesticides that they have to use for it aren't necessarily the best. Um, I'm, I don't feel that I know enough about it to really make a, a confident 100% statement, but I have heard that um, it's not always the best choice um, just because even a, a tree that you have that's live can have a lot of negative, uh, it will have a negative impact on the environment. So it's like uh, when you have cutlery, there are different studies that say sometimes if you have plastic cutlery it depends on where it comes from and how long it takes for your water to get there like what's better and what's worse it's always a case-by-case -case issue yeah I, I don't know that's a big part of the reason I don't do real trees is it's not only the hassle of it but I don't want to fill a tree every year and I have one that I've had for years and it works fine and I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon um, but mm -hmm. Yeah, I would think anything that you farm that extensively, excuse me, <coughs> and then replace year after year with a new one is, is not sustainable. No, I would imagine it would be quite taxing <coughs> and um, sort of the environment around it. I mean, it looks really pretty. <laughs> the Christmas tree farm like, like an hour away and it looks gorgeous, but... Did you guys see the Netflix documentary they have on those trees that they bring down from Ontario and Quebec and they bring them to New York City? No. No, yeah, that? there's a whole thing on it. Um, it's just about how they cut down the trees and how they, they get them down and how they transport them and how it's a, it's a business that works for them because they make enough money because it's New York City with these beautiful trees. And that was interesting. I would check it out if, uh, if you get the chance. Oh, I'm going to have to get back to you on that one. Uh, it specifically said Canada and America with their tree trade. So something along those lines. <laughs> oh, I did not know that. Yeah. Well, I guess to the caller or listeners to this call, um, if you do have a real tree, ooh, sorry. oh, <laughs> if you do have a real tree, there are often places that you can take your tree to get composted. So if that is something that you've already put up and you have in your home and you're already listening to this, um, just know that there are options than just putting it in fill. So it uh, can also be put outside if you have some land, like uh, depending if you live in, you know, kind of a farm area. Um, the birds and squirrels and different critters like to kind of create little nests and homes over the winter in them. So if you have some space, you can kind of leave it out um, over the winter season to give them a place to to have uh through the winter cold <laughs> um but yeah i did do some research and buying a brand new plastic fake tree isn't really that great because of all of the chemicals and water and energy that is um, used to create them so if you can try to buy a used one from you know goodwill or one of those kind of secondhand stores as well um, and then again, if you are going to just get like a real tree, then do your research and make sure you're not getting one from across the world. <laughs> um, there are some farms here in Texas that do it sustainably. You just have to kind of look into those. 
And if you do get a used tree, make sure it's not pre-lit because those are the worst. You can reuse one without lights forever. Well, not forever, but for a significantly longer time. But if you have a tree that's pre-lit and one of those bulbs is out, you're going to be in trouble. So keep that in mind when you're buying your secondhand tree. We're experiencing that right now, as a matter of fact. Yep. <laughs> So I was going to change the topic over to the food side of the house. Um, we all cook really large meals, I'm sure, for Christmas Day. Um, so just keep in mind when you're shopping, try to buy local. Um, you know, you're not going to try to buy things that have been harvested across the world again and have to get shipped over here to us. So try to buy things at farmer's markets if they're still open and available in your area. Or just pay attention in the grocery store where things are coming from. And if you're going to have a lot of food and have leftovers, make sure that, you know, people are going to actually eat them and turn them into sandwiches and those types of things on the following days so that you're not uh, wasting a lot of money and then ending up throwing it away in the trash. That's the hardest thing with is is the leftovers because it's such a huge mentality. You don't ever want to run out of food, so you make all. Of, my mom's really bad for this. We do Christmas brunch, and she makes enough food to feed to feed twice as many people that actually go because she's so worried about um, running out. And there's always way too much leftovers, but she tries. Most of them get given away, but so much food and she knows we don't eat it all and but every year she's got to make this massive christmas feast which looks lovely but yeah we don't eat that much so maybe uh yeah thinking you yeah. don't need as much food as you actually that's a good point i mean i think what you what you were saying uh jennifer and chris about um you know not try not to waste food it's not it's not something that I have thought about in, like in regard to being sustainable, but yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you know, one thing, one year, um, a while ago, me and a friend on Thanksgiving went around and, um, we gave food to folks on the street, like homeless folks. And I honestly don't remember where we got the food from, but <laughs> I was thinking, Hey, I, just as you guys were talking just now, I'm like, Hmm, maybe, that would be kind of cool, like kill two birds with one stone. Like, you know, you give someone some del delicious food and then also you're not throwing it in the trash. Can you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, my mic hasn't been working. I keep trying to talk and it. I think I just got working. I just want to make sure <laughs> now it's working. <laughs> Sorry. I, um, I jumped in and I couldn't hear for a while. You guys were talking about food mm -hmm. waste mm -hmm. at parties yes. and everything like that. Um, did you touch on like if you're hosting a party using not using single use items and uh, plates and napkins or silverware if you can help it and things like that? that yep, that's yeah. usually. Did somebody bring that up? No, I got it. I was going to say that's usually a big culprit of waste in the during the holiday season in any party, really. But mm -hmm. um, they make compostable plates. Um, but ideally, you know, if it's a small enough party, just just wash the dishes. <laughs> you know, it's not that big of a deal, and it's kind of nicer. It feels fancier. But um, if you can't do that, sometimes it's not possible. Try not to use plastic or um, make it, you know, at least recyclable if you don't have an option. Um, because, yeah, that flatware and the straws and the plates add up really quickly. <laughs> mm -hmm. I actually saw a really interesting, I think it was a Facebook um, ad or something about challenging one another to stop buying plastic and start saying no to plastic when people offer you a bag or a cup or whatever. Because um, you have to start changing the dialogue around things being convenient and um, you're not going to really accomplish that until you start doing it, right? So, like, bring your reusable mug to your coffee place. Um, whenever you're out and about, I always try to have, you know, like one of those sporks that I can use that's just metal. Um, even at work, like, I just make sure I have a plate, bowl, spoon, fork, knife, you know, and I can 
not have to use any of the, the single use items that are in, in the office also at home as well. Um, so yeah, I just thought that was interesting. You know, they're really just trying to get away from recycling plastic because <laughs> it's really hard to do now that China is no longer accepting our plastic. And so a lot, I think it's like 90% of the plastic that's generated is actually going to the landfill, but it's actually also in the yeah. open the ocean, which we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. So really just kind of try to um, change that that behavior of always accepting it because it's convenient. Um, and I think the people that are offering it to you are going to start paying attention to it as well once you start saying no. <laughs> so yeah. that's just kind of a good way to start changing the behavior and the culture in our area. I've really tried to get better when I go out, when I order a drink to say no straw emphatically. And um, if I forget to bring my reusable container and I can carry it out, then I will refuse the container, even if it's extremely difficult for me to carry it. <laughs> I think you may have seen Rebecca at the last Planeteers meeting. I put everything in napkins and just like. You did. And the waiter it. looked at you like you were crazy. He did. That was really funny. <laughs> he asked me like three times, do you want a box? And I was like, no, I'm no. punishing myself. Because I left it in the car. Take it's a picture raining. next time. Take a picture. Right. That'd be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> We, uh, yeah, we, that was but great. Like, Sorry. It Sorry, can we were, suck, but yeah, you have to force yourself through it. <laughs> yeah, I will carry, I have gotten the kids to carry things out of the grocery store with me because I've forgotten a bag. We're like, oh, team effort, everybody. Let's, and yeah. I get funny looks. But uh, we were at a, at a picnic uh, just a couple of months ago, and in the Facebook event, it said, bring your own plate, bring your own cutlery. So I think that's another thing, too, is that oh, awesome. people, you know, as hosts, we just like, well, we have to provide everything for our guests, not thinking, well, no, this can be a communal event, like a potluck. So we don't have enough dishes or cups to have any more than about five to eight people. So if we had anybody else, it was like, well, you have to bring your own or else you're eating off nothing. So, but, and it was fine when I mean, we didn't even think about it. I'm like, oh, that's actually a really good idea. Hmm. Bring your own cutlery, bring your own plate and then wash it there or bring it home with you and wash it at your house. Also doing the dishes with friends is lots of fun too. You get into really good conversations when you're staying around doing dishes. It's <laughs> true. I have uh, stations when I have parties now with signs. So recycling, compost, trash, and the trash is the smallest container. Yeah, that's awesome. And inevitably, I still have to dig things out of the trash cause, mm -hmm. or, or the recycling because people don't look. But I try to ingrain in my guests, you know, please respect my rules and, and I'm trying to, you know, not use as much, blah, blah, blah. So I hope that that's that gets them thinking when they have parties, but who knows, you know. Hey, Jennifer, yeah. um, do you have Michelle picking up your compost? At your house? No, I have a compost pile in my backyard. Okay. So I, I do it myself. I do like a shameless plug for her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. She's great. I'll, I'll let you do it because you use her at uh, your work. <laughs> yeah, we have a compost uh, pickup business in Colleen called The Green Plant and um, started by a girl named Michelle who just loves the environment and kind of saw a need for that service in the area and I don't know how many clients she has but she will pick up your compost once a week or every other week um, from Copper's Cove to Temple anywhere in between so she's uh, I think she charges um, a flat uh, five dollars a week if you do it weekly and then if it's every other week it's a little more per week but it's not as much so um, yeah she just gives you a big five gallon bucket and at the end of the week on your pickup day you put it outside and she comes and swaps it out and gives you a new one and it seals you don't smell it unless you open it and leave it open but um, we use it at work we I am trying to get my coworkers to do it um, regularly but it's a challenge and they're getting better they're trying um, but yeah it's been it's been kind of a fun fun learning curve. <laughs> That's so awesome. Yeah, Amanda was yeah. telling me about that. Um, yeah, if you guys wanted to start composting and you're not quite ready to do it yourself or you live in an apartment or you, you know, it's just not feasible, um, that's a great option for people who want to be more sustainable but just can't quite manage it on their own. Hey, and whoever's listening, you know, New Year's resolutions, there's right? nothing to add to the list. I love it. <laughs> Um, 
I have another one, and this is just simple. You know, year-round when you're shopping, you go to the grocery store, you bring your reusable bags. So when you're when you're shopping for gifts and you're, you know, all these sales going on, Black Friday or whatever, um, just remember to bring your bags still. Like, don't leave them at home and only use them at the grocery store. I bring those bags with me at the mall, at, you know, Kohl's, anywhere I go. Um, I have a giant bag on my shoulder. <laughs> so always have your reusable bags handy and give your gifts in reusable bags if you can or wrap them in wrapping in a newspaper or, you know. Or make bags for them and have them yeah. able to reuse those. I always love to do that. And then at least if they're not yeah. using the reusable bag, I know that they have one and they <laughs> might. <laughs> Or what are those little, um, my friend just gave me one for Christmas, uh, the little Japanese square cloth things that oh, you can wrap. Fukushima. Fukushima. Nope. Fukushima's. Yeah. Fukushima's. Those are super cool. Oh my God. Yeah, those are neat. You can wrap anything in them. Mm-hmm. Well, it looks really pretty. Yeah. I, I, I might make that my green life hack when, we, when, when I realize how to use it. <laughs> I got a quick question for my esteemed fellow panelists. <laughs> You know how Christmas, sort of like Thanksgiving or whatever, are the, are the equivalent Canadian holidays where family gets together, mm -hmm. you know, and often family that you haven't seen in like a year, a couple of years. So, you know, everyone, it's sort of like politics. Everyone kind of has a different approach or a different take on, um, you know, how, how they how they view using the earth's resources and all that stuff. So, um, you know, in, in like this, let's say you're at a family member's house and, you know, you're either cooking or the subject of planning Christmas meal comes up or just any of the things that we've talked about relating to that. Like, I mean, do you guys have any advice as far as, and maybe I'm asking more for myself than for anyone, but, on how to like navigate those conversations and in a way that doesn't, you know, you don't, you don't offend people or step on people's toes, but maybe still kind of shed some new light or look at things in a way that haven't seen them before. I don't know. So I have one and for me, it's always leading by example. Mm -hmm. So maybe I'll make a dish and the dish has all local produce and that's how I made it. And maybe that's what makes the difference in the taste. Or maybe I know I was vegan for a while and I would just make vegan dishes and not tell anybody it was vegan. And whenever they were like, oh my gosh, this is so good. I'd be like, thanks, it's vegan. So that has black beans in it. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome for the extra flax. Black beans in them. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But when they say that you know they they don't know and then they're like wow i had no idea maybe being vegan's not so bad or maybe eating less meat's not so bad or whatever it is for them right. but mm -hmm. leading by example number one for me anybody yeah, else i would say well I, I yeah to build on that like if you're bringing a dish uh instead of wrapping it in plastic or foil wrap it in beeswax or cloth or mm -hmm. don't bring it in a in a disposable pan, you know, go out of your way to bring it in something that you can reuse and, and serving utensils and et cetera. Um, does anybody have experience with this? My mother-in-law knows I hate plastic and she makes a point of saying it every single time she gives me leftovers. And she apologizes if she gives me leftovers in plastic. She's like, I know you don't like pra plastic, Chris, but this is all I have. And I'm like, <laughs> I just appreciate the, the leftovers. Thank you very much. And then I'll recycle whatever it is, or I'll give it back to her. And my sister does the same thing. She'll give me something in like a margarine container. She's like, now don't lose the fancy Tupperware. And I'm like, I'll recycle it. Don't worry. But it, it's... I they they know I'm not very shy about it either. I think that's my problem. Is that I'm like, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Chris coming in with their eco facts. Everybody leave. Studies have shown. <laughs> <laughs> so they know me well enough to know that if, um, like I'll come. I just I I'm like Rebecca. I'll leave by example. I come in with my beeswax wrapped casserole. Most of the time it's plant based. Um, I'll ask for cups. Like where are your cups? I would like a glass of water or something like that or cutlery or things like that and try not to use the reusable, the, the, you know, like the red solo cups or whatever. And, um, yeah, I just be myself 
pretty unapologetically around them. Because I can, they're my family, they'll love me. <laughs> I have That's an true. experience. Um, so my family always buys like that plastic plate and plastic cup and plastic all, everything. And so Same. everyone was Sour like, foam. yeah, everyone was throwing it in the trash, but it's like recyclable. So I pulled everything out of the trash and <laughs> hand washed awesome. it and put it in the recycle bin. So now every year, because there's like 50 of us, so it's just impossible for them to handle like dishes for that. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, if this is what we're going to do, then we're going to at least recycle. And I hate that it's plastic, but again, it's just what you have to do sometimes. And then I was yeah. like, well, maybe we should do compostable this time now that we have like a compost center we can take stuff to. So again, it's just, it, it's awareness, bringing mm -hmm. awareness to the problems without being preachy about it, because otherwise people just like don't listen and they- Oh yeah, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the moment you get out of your soapbox, they like shut their brains off and don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I very quietly pulled everything out of the trash and just hand washed it. But they all saw what I was doing and then it clicked. So yeah. um, now they know that they have to wash their plastic plate and put it in the recycle <laughs> container. That's awesome. I think too, if you present it as like, hey, did you know this cool thing or this fun fact, you know, mm -hmm. make it like a, almost like you're not trying to educate them. You're just, you know, sharing a bit of information you saw on the internet. <laughs> I Make always do that with the kids. Like that. I'm always like, did you know? What an interesting fact, kids. So let's recycle together. Yeah. The teacher There's in me more. does that all the time. <laughs> There's more plastic than fish in the ocean. Isn't that crazy? So we should recycle. <laughs> right. <laughs> You're Miss Frizzle. Think, and I think, yeah. too, like, Jen, what, what you were talking about, of just um, living your life and kind of not making a big deal out of it, but just saying, this is how I do things in my house. And mm -hmm. people sort of respect that, I, I would assume. Yep. <laughs> and then do what I do and give them all <laughs> the the reusable stuff as their gifts at Christmas. So then they don't have an excuse as to why they're not using it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Guilt, guilt them into it. I spent money on this for you, these bamboo flatware. You need to use it. <laughs> yep. I got those metal straws. You better use them. Right? <laughs> Next time you see them, oh, where's your, uh, where's that straw I got you? You know, that wasn't cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Price has gone down on those, though, quite yes, a bit. Yeah, a little bit, thankfully. Um, any other tidbits anyone wants to share or questions? Um, um, well, for the kids, I, I'm not, I don't know how old your kids are, Rebecca. Um, how old are no. you? How old are they? No kids. No kids? Oh, <laughs> the kids you teach. About, like, high school kids. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. My kiddos, I, I'm a high school teacher. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. So with our kids, <laughs> they're uh, 12 and 10. So since they were little, we've only given them uh, three gifts. That's it. Uh, they have grandparents who their love language is gift giving. So they are more than happy with that. Recently, though, I was talking to a friend, and she – uh, has stopped doing that with the kids. She gives them a choice. She's like, do you want gifts or do you want a trip? And for the last three years, her kids who are the same age as my kids have picked a trip. So that's what they do instead of getting gifts is that they give, they get this trip and it's usually a pretty decent trip. Um, so we were talking the other day and we're going to start doing that too. So this year is the last year that the kids get gifts from Santa, gifts from us. Um, and next year they can either pick a stocking or a trip and so yeah so experience and kids don't i think that's the other thing too they underestimate kids desire for stuff they don't need it they don't really want it they just want to you know they get over it in five minutes they don't actually want all that stuff but the memories will last the memories forever. are something that you can't buy mm -hmm. so yeah less gifts more experience yeah. Things that the person actually wants to like. My mother hates giving practical gifts. She absolutely <laughs> hates. Them. My mother in law was horrified when I asked for cloth <laughs> bags and these fancy glass jars. She's like, "What?" I'm like, "Yeah, but I want. They're, I'm going to use them." She was horrified giving gifts to me last year. I'm like, "This is the best gift ever." <laughs> she was so upset. I'm like, "No, this is great." She hates giving practical gifts, but those oh. are the best things because sometimes it's stuff you wouldn't buy for yourself. And, and things that you're actually really going to use and they'll get a lot of life out of them. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. 
I was just going to say, my husband and I do that all year long. Mm -hmm. Like, we do not give each other gifts for anything ever. We We just plan, like, a really badass trip. And we go, like, (laughs) once or twice a year. And everyone's like, what? You're not going to do anything for a birthday, anniversary, Christmas? And I'm like, nope. I don't need anything. I just want to go have an awesome trip and, you know, enjoy experiences and memories. So, yeah, kudos to you for doing that with the kids. (laughs) They're really (laughs) cool about it, too. Like, they've got got a bucket list of places they want to go. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Exactly. Create those bucket lists instead of a Christmas list. Yeah. (laughs) That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's that's so true. Like, I was, as you were talking, Chris, I was thinking about like, you know, TV commercials that paint this picture and kind of send the message that um, giving your kid this toy or this expensive thing is gonna just oh bring them so much happiness and it's gonna create this like bond between you and your kid. And I don't know. I think it's kind of a lie, honestly. It's a lie. It's a commercialism. Big- yeah. yeah. Yeah, we haven't had cable in five years, and I don't miss those commercials for anything in the world. And I don't want anything now because I don't see the commercials. It's the best. Yeah, I, I haven't had cable in forever. For yeah, they don't ask yeah. for anything now because they don't see it. If they see it, it's on a YouTube video that they've watched. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of on, on in the um, same vein as what Chris was talking about, I was uh, heard about this um, movement called Advent Conspiracy. And it was uh, started, I think, about eight or ten years ago um, by some pastors, one in Oregon, one in Texas. And, I mean, it's kind of geared towards Christians and churches, but it's, I guess, uh, applicable to anybody. But they have four main values that they're trying to reorient people towards and away from commercialism and consumerism and materialism and that stuff. And it's worship fully, spend less, give more, love all. Spend less... Um, give more love all I think would be applicable Mm. here and like obviously spend less you know it's like um, they say spending less does not mean spending nothing rather we will thoughtfully evaluate what companies and causes we support through our purchases and then the give more is basically what you were saying Chris saying like I'm just kind of reading what they have on here relational giving means we think about the other person who they are and what they care about we focus more on giving our undivided presence and less on a pile of presents under the tree, um, which is, yeah, basically what you were talking about. And then the love all is like sort of getting back to, um, I guess, the origin or the purpose, the meaning of Christmas. You know, Christmas is a chance to move closer to those in crisis. We will love others as Jesus has loved us. The poor and hurting of our world Um can be reached by God through the way we choose to celebrate Christmas. But I, anyway, I just thought it was kind of a cool, um, so they've got people all over the world um, that are sort of on board with this. It's, it's kind of neat. But anyway, I just thought those principles are really helpful for me in thinking through like how I celebrate Christmas because like we were just saying, I mean, everything, you know, in the media is trying to push us in one direction, mm-hmm. but it's it's really a lot of it is just sort of empty. In the end, like in the moment, like it feels great, but in the end, you're just like, oh, that's it. Like, is that all Christmas is about? It's just buying stuff. <laughs> bye, bye, bye. <laughs> yeah. Has anyone read the yeah. Life Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo? I've heard of it. I haven't read it though. I've heard of it so. Too. It's amazing. I think it's totally applicable to what we just talked about. And it's the book, when you read it, it's like a step-by-step guide to kind of cleansing your life and having only what you desire in it, what brings you joy and what feels magical. So essentially you go through everything. And ever since I read that book, I've been a lot less materialistic, especially around the holidays, because I realized that I don't need nearly as much as I'm told that I need. And the things that I have in my life are put there with a purpose. Mm -hmm. Um, So especially applicable around this time of year where I keep getting bombarded with messages of you need this, you need that. But essentially, Um, it's the people and and the specific things that bring joy to my life that are necessary not necessarily big commercial items so I'd highly recommend that read to all of us and all the reader all the readers and listeners and anyone who this might reach so the title one more time I believe it's called the life-changing magic of tidying up by Marie Kondo 
And isn't she the one that like every everything every time she goes through her belongings, she looks at it, and if she decides that she doesn't want it, then she kind of like thanks the item for the time that it spent in her life and does a little yes, <laughs> absolutely. And every time she says she puts something away, she's like, "Thank you for serving your purpose," and she passes it on. And it's even now, like when my items aren't at rest, like if something is hanging, it bothers me. Like I want it to be at peace and at rest, which is totally from that book. And it might be slightly irrational, but um, you know, a, the book made. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, it was a good read. It was a good read. And I think that around the holidays, if you read it, you'd be like, oh my gosh, I don't need anything. I have everything I need. Mm -hmm. For real. Yeah, the uh, consumerist society we live in um, can be a little suffocating at times because um, you just, you think you need it or you want it and then you end up with all this clutter, this stuff. Um, and really, it ends up being bad for the environment in the end because what do you do with it? You either throw it away or you pass it on to someone else and then they're stuck with it. Um, mm -hmm. So it's all about this you know, minimalism mindset and, and doing less or, or using less, um, living a simpler life. Uh, Making sure things serve a purpose. That's really important. If something doesn't serve a purpose, give you joy, it feels magical, right. get rid of it. Don't buy it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <sighs> well, do we have any other um, ideas or topics we want to discuss on this this episode? Anything anybody didn't get to? We talked about shopping and gifts and partying and all that stuff. Those were the main things I had. Um, we want to go on to the green life hacks. Sure. Anybody sure. Have one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so I will go first. I have mine right here. So I am really excited. I backed Final Straw on Kickstarter. I don't even know, like five or six months ago. Um, it's they call themselves the first collapsible straw. So uh, this is my final straw in this little case. Yes, it's plastic, but I don't intend on ever getting rid of it. Um, so you open it up and it's on a keychain. So you take it with you wherever you go. And there is my collapsible straw. <laughs> and look, it's shiny. I paid extra for the, the rainbow tint. But um, so yeah, it's got, it kind of comes apart. There's like, this one has rubber inside and then, you know, the end, the tips are, are rubber, but this is all metal. Um, and then it comes with a little squeegee inside and a little drying rack. So I was super excited. I ordered a bunch of these and um, paid a lot of money for them. But, you know, I was backing a good company, I hope, and um, good cause. So that's my life hack for today is a collapsible straw. And even if you don't want to um, shell out the money for one of these, um, there's plenty of reusable straws out there. This is just more convenient because I don't have to carry another thing into the restaurant when I go shopping. So mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. yeah, that's super cool. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm with you though. It's like, you know, there are things that have a little bit of an upfront cost, but if they're going to really improve your life and it's, or it's something like that, then hey, it's worth it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Who else has a green life hack? I do. Okay. So you can see this. These are Amigo yeah. wraps. So this is started by a Canadian lady in I think out west I don't I want to say Manitoba but I'm not that is right anyways uh, these are the medium sized wraps I bought some Aviga wraps I brought the variety pack years ago and if you take care of them really well which means don't wash them in hot water because that just melts all the wax and I did that one time um, it should last you about a year mine lasted longer because I kind of forgot about them for a little bit um, but when you're done with them, they make an excellent fire starter. Um, so I just had to get some new ones. So there's that, the Beagle Wraps. And then these are called Stasher Bags. They are made out of uh, silicone. They can be put in the freezer. They can be put in the oven, in the microwave, and you can boil them. And oh. they're, pri they're pricey, I'm not going to lie. This sandwich size bag 
was $18 Canadian. So I'm not 100% sure what that translates into American dollars, but this sucker is not going anywhere. And it's reusable and it's washable. It's really easy to seal. Um, and I haven't bought Ziploc baggies or cling wrap or anything like that in about three, four, three or four years. And anything that I'm given, like I'm given Ziploc baggies and stuff, I just wash them and reuse them until they fall apart. But I haven't bought any uh, personally. So yeah, but the, and they feel really cool. And they come in different colors. I believe this one is like charcoal. <laughs> have, uh, like rose gold ones and like blue ones and stuff like and then in different sizes but I like these because you can do anything with them and cook with them and it's amazing so those mine a little bit pricey upfront cost but that's forever that, and your kids I lunch say, them. I gotta yeah. see those silicon that silicon bag is really cool yeah yeah um, Scratcher. I got it off Amazon what did you say was the name of the company again stasher stasher Okay. Yes. I don't know if anybody's in Texas, but they have those at Central Market in Austin. And I, I know it's a chain that's around, but every Central Market I've been to has those bags and they are oh, cool. so cool. Yeah. I don't have any of those. I do have the beeswax wrap in a different brand. Mm -hmm. And um, it, what's great is like, you don't even have to, it, it's like saran wrap in that it just sticks to the side, but like you just hold it and it kind of melts, you know, with you can melt it with hand. your hands. Yeah. With yeah. The but you have to wash them in cold water because I washed, I washed one with, I wasn't even thinking about it and I washed it in hot water and the thing just, yeah, didn't work anymore. They're great for sandwiches and yeah. yes, avocado and a good conversation starter. Yeah. Yes. Yes, they are. Um, so I am moving to San Antonio. So I'm actually at a friend's house right now. So I don't have any of my like laugh hack, life hack items. But I'm in her bedroom, and I just noticed she has this lamp that she made out of corks. Can you see oh, it? Neat. How cool. So I was like, that's a really, really cool thing. It's so, And she's not even, like, trying to be all environmental about it. She's like, I just like corks. And <laughs> so you can buy these I'm crafty. Lamps. <laughs> and yeah, I guess they ha she has another matching one. Where she you just put your own stuff in there, I guess. So I thought that was pretty cool. But yeah, I'm no longer at Fort Hood. Uh, I took a yeah. job at Fort Sam in San Antonio, but I'm still in Texas, so I'm happy to still participate with you all. Yeah, we're sad to have her leave, but we're happy for her, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations on your new job. Thank yeah, you. that's yeah. awesome. There. Yeah, it's exciting. People make the coolest things out of corks, like pictures, cork boards. I mean, you know, just like I have a friend that made little decorations with beads and I don't know. It's yeah, crazy love, the things people do. I, I love those like magical materials like silicone. Silicone, for example, is one of them. Like, is, isn't that what the bag is made out of? The stature? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean like, and uh, yeah, cork. Have you guys heard of uh, graphene? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, graphene is crazy. But it's like at the nano level, so we don't oh, even wow. know the full capabilities of it yet. <laughs> the clone's like plastic that doesn't melt, and that blows my mind still. Cause yeah. Like what's, how, you're how always taught, don't put plastic in the oven. Don't, you know, apply heat or it breaks. <laughs> the silicone's crazy. Yeah. I, I have sort of, well, it's not really, I don't know if it's a hack, but um, <clears throat> so my folks just moved to town from California and I was helping them get set up on utilities and all that stuff and uh, in their new house. And um, one thing I was, I was, uh, I wanted to do is just to um, set them up on paperless billing, you know, uh, and just auto pay and stuff like that so that you don't have to write checks and get bills in the mail. Now I know most people probably do that anyway, but for that small percentage that doesn't, I just wanted to kind of throw that out there. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of companies will give you a discount if you go to auto pay and paperless as well. Mm -hmm. So that's a benefit. So awesome. my green hack, I don't have with me. Um, I don't wash my clothes here. I don't have a dryer yet. Um, however, I have these wool balls that you put essential oils on and you rub them together. And I've been using them for the last couple months that I've been doing laundry and my clothes smell amazing and I'm not wasting 
any dryer sheets. I'm not wasting the packaging, anything. It's amazing. 10 out of 10 would do again. <laughs> wow. What's the brand name on those? Um, they have them at Walmart. They're just wool balls. Like that's what they, they're called on the package. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know. But do but someone to, had to be the one to laugh. Sorry, I'm yeah. so <laughs> do you have to yeah. buy the essential oils separately? You do, yes. Um, and and it depends have... on what kind you want, but you just stick them on there. You rub it, rub them together. How many drops you put them in? A, I usually put about three per, and then I, I rub them around. But I, I always really each like... Each wash? Yeah, each wash. But I always okay. really like the sm strong smell. Um, so that's why I go with that. But I've been doing that for the last couple months, and my clothes aren't staticky, and they smell great, and I'm not wasting anything. So I'd highly recommend trying them. Yeah. That is They're pretty great. awesome. They're a great substitute for dryer sheets, and I've had some for a while, and I haven't used them because I just have the other, they're like hard plastic ones that somebody gave me a long time ago, but I want my clothes to smell pretty too, so I'm going to start Yeah, I would those. really recommend them. I even have this huge thing of dryer sheets that I haven't used, and I'm like, well, they should get used, but I don't want them to be used by me. It's kind of a moral conundrum, but Donate it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Um, before we go, I want to share where you guys can find us online. Um, we are Sustainably Geeky. So we are on Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, and YouTube. Um, please subscribe on whatever channel you listen to and give us a five-star rating or a review, depending on the for, uh, format. Um, we're also on Facebook, so like us on there. Uh, you can send us messages and give us suggestions for new topics. Um, we will be recording one a month, and um, we are excited to uh, hear from you. Um, where can we find you online, um, Chris? Uh, here at Sustainably Geeky, also on Epically Geeky and Marginally Geeky, our other podcasts, um, and on Instagram at Cedar Birch Cottage. Awesome. Jen, where can we find you online? Um, I'm not really <laughs> sure yet. <laughs> but I'll just put a plug out there for uh, SentexSustains.org. That's in Central Texas, Fort Hood, and the surrounding community. So check that website out. Awesome. Stefan, are you still uh, mysteriously not here? On yeah. Yeah, <laughs> here, you but can not find here. me online checking my email. <laughs> Rebecca, is there anything you'd like to plug online? I don't have Social anything media yet. Or website? I don't have anything yet. Um, I'm just getting into the technology world, but I will add to that soon. Awesome. I guess, um, I well, guess one, you, one link I could mention is just adventconspiracy.org, which is the thing I was talking about earlier. I just remembered that. Okay. Awesome. And you can find me online. Um, here on Sustainably Geeky, of course, uh, Epically Geeky and Marginally Geeky, as Chris mentioned, which are our sister uh, podcasts, and on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Het's Gonna Be Me. <laughs> um, on behalf of everyone on the show, thank you for listening and have a good night.